Everyone, this is Ryan with Vapor Owning Technologies. Wanted to do a quick demonstration of between a few of the abrasives that we typically recommend to people here. Um, in the top left corner, you've got 220 aluminum oxide, just to kind of show us what aluminum oxide looks like. This right here is glass bead. This is a 170 to 325 mesh. And then right here is ceramic bead, and this is a 120 to 270. Now on the corner over here, to give you some scale, this is actually graphite. It's, it's, it's the point of this pencil right here. And it just shows you the depth that you're at here at 500 times magnification. So you can understand how small these abrasives are. Now, even though they are very small, they do have a very drastic impact on your part. Uh, for example, if you're blasting with something like the aluminum oxide, you can see those sharp angular edges. Those are able to remove paint, remove corrosion, and they're also able to etch your part. So when you're blasting, it's gonna, it's gonna finish with a duller result, but it's also gonna be better for bonding whenever it comes to paint. Because again, you're creating those etches on the surface for stuff to be able to grab onto. Glass bead and ceramic bead, you can see these are circular abrasives, which means they're gonna flow across the part better. It's gonna leave you with a more polished result. It's not going to be as good at removing paint and corrosion, but it still can do it because again, you are propelling the media. Uh, but it's again, it's, it's not going to be as good as something like an aluminum oxide, which is an angular abrasive. Now, one thing I do want to hit on really quick is a lot of people are under the misconception that your air pressure is what determines your ability to remove paint and corrosion and, and those types of things. It's not. It's actually your abrasive choice because, again, um, you can propel glass bead as fast as you want, but... At, a, at an average pressure, aluminum oxide is still going to do a better job inside of one of our vapor honing cabinets, again, because it's just more fit for the job. The reason that I chose glass bead and ceramic bead as two spherical abrasives to show you guys is because you can see that glass bead is in fact hollow. So we've got our ring lighting on. You can see all the way through those. You can see it actually reflecting back. Then on the bottom section here, you can see your ceramic bead, which is a solid abrasive. Now, when you're blasting, the ceramic bead is going to hit the surface just a little bit harder because it is more dense. That's why a lot of people, if they're trying to do um, wet shot painting, they use ceramic bead because it is more dense. It also is going to last longer. So your glass bead, as you blast with it, is going to break down. You're gonna actually shatter those beads, whereas the ceramic is gonna wear more evenly. So if you're doing any type of engineered part where you need to get the exact same surface finish over a wide range of parts, you need to be using a ceramic bead. It is more expensive, but again, your results are gonna be much more predictable. Now, one more thing I wanna mention before I actually wrap this video up is something we employ a lot here at Vapor Honing and we recommend to you guys is actually mixing abrasives. So for example, a lot of people will mix aluminum oxide and glass bead in their cabinets because what it allows them to do is remove light corrosion, light paint, light rust very quickly because the inclusion of the aluminum oxide, but they end up with a nice finish on their part because of the glass bead. This is a great combination, especially if you're someone who's working in like a mechanic shop where you get a part in, it's disgusting, you wanna quickly take everything off that part and you wanna leave it with a good finish. That's the perfect combination. And again, it's something you can only do in a vapor honing cabinet. Um, our pumps are specifically designed to give you guys the perfect slurry mixture. So no matter what ratio you put in there, you're gonna be getting that at the blast gun. And again, it's something very, very useful you can employ in a vapor honing cabinet. Now, again, this was a quick video. It was just kind of explaining the basics of abrasives, their shapes, and when you should use them. But if you guys have any more specific questions, we love answering those for you guys. So if you'll leave them in the comments below, we'll make sure to make a video on it and get that information to you guys. And if you have any questions about which abrasives you should be using specific to your process and you wanna test it out, remember, you can send in your parts to us. We'll blast them in a wide range of abrasives ship them back to you guys so you know exactly what you need to be using at your business to get the optimal results. Thank you all for watching. Hope this video helped. Remember, please put any questions, future video ideas, anything in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next one.